Question. What is the last major geophysical event in Earth history? I'll give you one guess in one second to, to figure it out. The Ice Age. Second question. What if evolutionary uniformitarian scientists can't explain the last major event while creationists can? What would that mean? I'll let you think about that while I'm talking. I'm going to be talking about uh, the recent Ice Age, that there was a recent Ice Age. The Ice Age is a major mystery of mainstream science. The climate change caused by the flood resulted in the Ice Age. There was only one rapid ice age. There will not be a future ice age. I'm going to talk about support for the model in the form of wet deserts. That is where they have evidence of lakes and, and rivers and streams and now desert areas. I'm going to talk about the lowlands. Uh, Siberia and Alaska and Yukon are unglaciated. This is a mystery of mainstream science. I'm going to just briefly touch on an area I've worked on for about 15 years, the woolly mammoths in Siberia, Alaska, and the Yukon. There's lots of confusion here. I'm just going to briefly touch on it. I believe it adds support to the model. I'm going to talk about what's called disharmonious associations during the Ice Age. It's common that you have animals that love warm climates and those that love cool climates that are fossilized, or I should say buried together, in Ice Age sediments. And I'm going to talk a little bit about end ice age extinctions. This will be support for the model. I'm going to also end with challenges to the model. The first one is going to be how are ancient ice ages to be explained? Alex, I'll define what ancient ice ages are. Those are the ice ages 100 million to, to, to over 2 billion years ago, they claim. And recently, ice cores from ice sheets supposedly give old age. Those are challenges to the model. This is the uniformitarian model. Each ice age takes 100,000 years. The glacial phase is 90,000 years, while the interglacial phase is only 10,000 years. And there's been 30 regularly repeating ice ages during the past 2.5 million years. Now, you might have heard there was only four ice ages. And this was dogma taught for about 60 years all around the world. Wherever they went, they saw four ice ages, four ice ages, four ice ages. That's all gone. Now they believe in 30, and it's based on deep sea cores. Oxygen isotope wiggles in deep sea cores is where they get the 30 now. Not only that, they claim the Antarctic ice sheet started forming 40 million years ago and reached a peak and has been in equilibrium for 15 million years. And the Greenland ice sheet formed and reached its present height several million years ago. That's the challenge that the uniformitarians give us. What do we do about it? A quote from an anti-creationist, Arthur Strahler, increasing duration of the ice age by a factor of 10 greatly increases the stress upon the creation scientist who must compress the events of 15 million years down into four thousand years of post-flood time. That's the sort of challenges you get about the Ice Age. So, what do we do about it? This has been my theme verse for 30 years. Examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. You don't start from scratch. You hold fast to the Gospel. You hold fast to Jesus. You hold fast to the Bible. But, you examine everything carefully. Now, we've talked a lot about dating methods, so let's, get, let's talk about dating methods and get them out of the way right away. And I have a personal reason why I distrust dating methods. I was a weather forecaster for 30 years, and I did this. I ruined thousands of outdoor activities. <laughs> and because of that, uh, I've become very skeptical of what they say millions of years ago, dates or other events they talk about millions of years ago. We can barely forecast the weather one day in advance. I think that um, all these scientists that, that are, are so sure, I read the geological literature, 90% of it's uniformitarian geological, geophysical literature, and I'll tell you, they are so dogmatic that it's almost as if they were there. They ought to be weather forecasters for one year, I would say, before they start their careers in, in geophysics or geology. And I don't think there'd be so much dogmatism. The first question, was there an ice age? 
Well, when you examine the surficial sediments, the sediments that are on the surface of the earth, in presently glaciated areas, you see a number of features. Now, this is the beautiful Athabasca Glacier in the Canadian Rockies that has been receding. This sign right there, that's where it was in 1890, and it has been receding. And when it leaves behind, you can examine what an ice does. It leaves behind rocks of all sizes within usually sand and silt, kind of in a finer grain matrix. It leaves behind in moraines and lateral moraines. In moraines and lateral moraines are formed when the glacier pushes out material ahead of it. And as it's along the side, it's called a lateral moraine. When it's in the front, it's called a terminal or in moraine. Speaking of this, I can't help but make a comment on global warming. Yes, all glaciers of the world have been receding, or mostly all. And yes, it is true there has been global warming, and I believe it is true that man has been a cause of it, but I believe that nature is part of it too, because between 1350 and 1850, we had the Little Ice Age, where all the glaciers in the world advanced. Now the, uh, we're in the opposite fluctuation where they're receding. So I think this is partly due to a little uh, the uh, effects of the sunshine and less volcanic ash in the stratosphere of why we're getting some of the global warming. There's a beautiful in moraine, very sharp looking, made not too long ago, probably made about 1890. Another feature you observe around glaciated areas is scratch bedrock. As the glacier moves over bedrock, it has rocks in the bottom of it, and those rocks in the bottom scratch the bedrock. So it's typical to see stri striated uh, bay, uh, bedrock, or pavement as they call this. Also, some of the rocks themselves get scratched, and a lot of times they get scratched in different directions. Here's uh, one set going that way, and there's another set going this way, like this. And it's probably because the rock turned a little bit in the ice. The ice is more plastic and malleable, so that's probably why you have striations in different uh, directions on rocks. So those are some of the features we see in currently glaciated areas. So let's extend those to features where it's claimed to have been glaciated. Here's one area where I near li uh, live, uh, used to live, west of Great Falls, Montana, near Augusta, Montana. These, this is the Rocky Mountain Front. The Rocky Mountains were glaciated during the Ice Age, and the ice came about 10 miles out into the high plain and formed this end moraine, just typically is what you see at the Athabasca Glacier. I'm taking a picture of, uh, of this from this part of the end moraine right here. It was breached right in here. Probably when the glacier melted, it breached through the end moraine right here. So that's why there's a gap there. When you look at the material in the end moraine, it's very similar to glaciers you see today. It's rocks of all sizes in a finer grain matrix surrounding the rocks. Typically, they call that glacial till. Also, as you go, when you go up into the Rocky Mountains, you see scratch bedrock going east. In fact, there's an 800-foot cliff right along here. The glacier came up out of this valley, scratched the bedrock, and went down over an 800-foot cliff. Also, you find in... Um, in the moraine that I showed you previously, you find rocks that are scratched in several different directions. Typical what you see in glaciated areas. And this is in an area that gets up in the 80s for high temperatures in the summertime. Also, as you tour around the west, you see that out of some of the mountain valleys of the western U.S., you see moraines, just like you see at um, Athabasca Glacier. This is probably one of the best moraines that I, I've ever seen before. This is the horseshoe-shaped lateral and end moraines around uh, beautiful Wallawa Lake in northeast Oregon. It, about, it moved out onto the Enterprise Plain in northeast Oregon, about 4,000 feet altitude, where it gets probably a high temperature of 90 uh, as the average in July. There's the lateral moraine, end moraine, and lateral moraine. They're fairly sharp looking, indicating that the Ice Age ended not that long ago.